All right, database of all UK children launched. An anonymous reader writes, a controversial database which holds the details of every child in England has now become available for child care professionals to access. The government says it will enable more coordinated services for children and ensure none, uh, none slips through the net. 390,000 people have access to the database but will have gone through stringent security training. And although this is off slash dot, uh, we know these programs exist. They're admitted in Australia. Uh, the United Kingdom is now rolling out their national identification card program with all the RFID technology. You have uh, Smith getting up there and laughing. Well, 30,000 already have it, and 70,000 will have it before the end of the year. There's nothing you can do about it. Ha, 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 And then the next step, Verichip. That's right. Verichip and receptors developed to sensor systems to detect biological threats. See, this is the good chip right here. This chip is going to help you. It's going to see what's going on in your body. It's good news. And we just shaved three inches off, or I'm sorry, three millimeters off the chip. That's right. It's an eight millimeter chip at this point. Now to the scary one. Saudi killer chip implants would track, eliminate undesirable. See, it's always out introduced outside of the United States when it's this outrageous, when it's this outlandish, when it's this in your face. A chip with a small amount of cyanide that can be triggered at any point that they want. So if you're a criminal, you get out of jail, they don't like what you've done, oh, or maybe they'll just put cyanide chips in everybody. And if they don't like what you've done, oh, cyanide microchips in human beings. Is this registering with you? The InfoWars with Jason Burmis back after this. PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWars.com. SolarBackup.com. A lot of things can cut off your electrical power. Hurricanes, snow, ice storms, uh, global warming, gremlins can chew off your electrical wires. Uh, a lot of things can happen. And so instead of sending all your money to Al Gore and carbon taxes, I suggest you take uh, the, your own power needs out of the control of that control freak and go to MySolarBackup.com. Uh, the degenerate control freak, uh, blood-sucking parasites of government, the New World Order, don't own the sun yet, folks. So make your move now. MySolarBackup.com, the great power source, 1,800, 1800 watts of power on demand. The solar panel, the system, the, the uh, charger, the batteries, all of it. Great little system. Get a bunch of these on your whole house. MySolarBackup.com, 877-327-0365, 877-327-0365. All right, folks, we're going to go to Forrest, Jerry, and Eric. But I just want to read the beginning of this killer chip article. It could be the ultimate in political control, but it won't be uh, patented in Germany. German media outlets reported last week that the Saudi inventor's application to patent a killer chip, as the Swiss tabloids put it, has been denied. Yeah, really? They denied the patent to put cyanide in a chip? And, and basically, it'll have a GPS transceiver placed in a capsule and inserted under a person's skin so that authorities could track him easily. Model B would have an extra function, a dose of cyanide to remotely kill the wearer without muss or fuss of authorities deemed he'd become a public threat. Cyanide in the microchips they want to put in your skin that become ever so small. I mean, we were only at 11 millimeters a few years ago. Now we're at 8 millimeters. But don't worry, it's good. With the receptors to develop spot, uh, sensor systems, it can de detect biological threats. <sighs> Verichip is always out there. Oh, uh, an integrated sensor system for the, de the detection of bio threats from pandemics and emerging diseases to bioterrorism. See how this all plays in? And by the way, they're saying that now 48 states have the uh, swine flu. They're saying that five people have died in the United States, including this teacher. And uh, the WHO is saying, oh, it's, it's going to come back. It's on its way back. It's, it's really going to be a big deal. Yet governments are saying, don't you dare declare level six because we know what level six means. And if you don't know what level six means, it means no human rights whatsoever. Quarantines and force of, uh, enforced inoculations, forced vaccinations. I mean, look at this. I, I look at this headline. CDC swine flu virtually everywhere in the United States. Um, most cases of the new strain are mild, although officials remain worried. 
And uh, where is it in this article? It says that uh, the new strain of H1N1 flu is circulating in 48 states with six deaths and more than 5,000 confirmed cases. I haven't seen one person with this. I haven't seen one person with a mask. I haven't seen one person actually talking about it. And I'm in Texas where supposedly the deaths are rampant. Oh, it's just it's just all hype, folks. And they want you to take the mandatory three-spot shot that they were promoting on the Today Show. The Pentagon briefings no longer quote Bible. And really, I'm not a Bible thumper, but I thought this was something that I should bring up. The Pentagon said Monday it no longer includes a Bible quote on the cover page of Daily Intelligence briefing it sends to the White House, as was practiced during the Bush administration and all previous administrations, might I add. So it is weird how, you know, the government is getting further and further and further away from God. So I thought I would cover that. No, they don't want kids to have a good time at prom parties. And they're like, Jason, you know, I'll probably get the call, Jason, my daughter died at a prom party. <laughs> She was hit by a, she was drunk and, oh no, so I'll probably get a horror prom story. But give me a break. Police in northern New Jersey infiltrated Facebook to learn that students were planning to bring alcohol and drugs to an after prom party. Police created a fake identity to enter the social networking site and found that uh, Fair Lawn High School students were going. Officers stopped the caravan a few miles from the high school and arrested four 17-year-old boys who officers said were carrying, <gasps> are you ready? Marijuana and scales and baggies commonly used to package the drug. Oh, no. They got those 17-year-old potheads on prom night. Justice is served. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. But this is just, you know, the start of it. I Actually, in my uh, film, Invisible Empire, I am going to go through how... Basically, Facebook, MySpace, you're databasing yourself you're, you're for, for the man, I guess, for the authorities, for the establishment. And they admit that the FBI is using MySpace. And here it is. New Jersey police use Facebook to uh, stop kids from smoking the pot on prom night. I'm, I'm really happy about that. That's good. That's good news. Let's see. Uh, earlier in the week, or last week, I'm sorry, I reported that Austria was going to get out of uh the CERN project, uh, the particle physics lab, where they're going to slam the two particle beams together and see what happens. Uh, they've had a change of heart. Austria has changed its mind and will now uh, not pull out of International Particle Phys Physics Laboratory CERN over the cost. Uh, Chancellor Werner Feynman said in a statement on Monday overruling his science minister. So the science minister, I guess, wanted out. Feynman said no dice. Uh, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, has created the biggest machine ever, a particle collider, the Large Hedron Collider, by the way, under the Freshwind's border outside of Geneva, which aims to recreate the conditions of, quote-unquote, the Big Bang, or the origin of the universe. Austria has been a member of CERN for over 50 years. The whole host of Austrian scientists are linked to CERN and will continue to do so in the future. So it looks like uh, Austria is still in CERN. Uh, U.S. to propose most aggressive auto fuel standards. Basically, they're saying that uh, cars will have to get uh, between 35 and 42 miles per gallon between 2012 and 2016. I, overall, I think this is actually a good thing. The problem is they're going to start banning and outlawing older cars in certain places because your carbon dioxide emissions too much. Or maybe they'll just tax you more if your car only gets, you know. So on top of paying, you know, ridiculous amounts of money for gas because you only get 12 to 18 miles per gallon, they're going to tax you on top of it for not being clean for the environment. Oh, thank you. Thank you, government. Oh, it's, I'm so glad that I'll be able to, you know, drive with the top down on my new sports car while you tax the hell out of me and overcharge me for gas. Oh, freedom. Let it ring. Let it ring. Uh, I love the smell of napalm on my Xbox. How computer games of the future will simulate the real stench of battle. Now, we've been saying that they're training the kids with the first-person shooters for some time for combat. They've also been doing similar programs uh, in the military. This is declassified. But we have this uh, Daily Mail article I thought I'd read. 
It is one of the most memorable lines in movie history. As the air around him is uh, is rent by explosions and the whiz of bullets, Colonel Kilgore stands nonchalantly with hands on his hips, sniffs the acid breeze, and declares, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Now actor Robert Duvall's famous scene from the Vietnam epic Apocalypse Now could be reenacted in the millions of teenagers' bedrooms thanks to technology that will allow computer game consoles to release the stench of war. The Ministry of Defense is part funding a project in which foul smells are released into the air during training videos so that recruits literally learn to sniff out trouble. If the technology proves a success, it is expected to be taken up by manufacturers of top-selling consoles such as the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Further getting us into VR, further, further desensitizing the popu population to violence, uh, the team of psychologists and computer engineers de developing the technology on behalf of the British Army plan to bombard troops with odors ranging from body sweat to diesel exhaust. The aim is to teach recruits that the presence of some smells and absence of others could indicate danger. They're making it even more realistic on the battlefield.